Welcome to Pictures in Time from the Department of History at Lancaster University, where we share historical images that help us to see the other side of history. I'm Nicholas Radburn, an Atlantic historian who studies the transatlantic slave trade at Lancaster. I'd like to share with you an image of a crop that is synonymous with the slave trade, sugarcane. You are seeing the canes when they've reached maturity after a year of growth. By this point, they are approximately 10 feet tall with a hard bamboo-like exterior and a core filled with saccharine sap. The pursuit of that sugary sap is what drove the massive expansion of the transatlantic slave trade during the 17th and 18th centuries and the growth of plantation slavery in the Americas. Sugar is so commonplace today that we take it for granted. On average, each of us consume 100 grams of refined sugar every single day. In the early Middle Ages though, sugar was unknown in England. Even after it was brought by returning crusaders in the 11th century, sugar remained an expensive luxury that was used principally as a medicine or spice rather than as a sweetener. It would take the adoption of tea drinking in the 17th century to increase the demand for sugar, as the English habitually sweetened the bitter beverage. Once Englishmen learned to sweeten tea, they soon added it to other beverages but also cakes, sweets, biscuits, and jams. By the end of the 18th century, sugar had become an essential part of people's diets in England. English farmers could not satiate this ever increasing demand for sugar because canes only grow in the tropics. English colonists therefore turned to the Caribbean islands where rich soils and a tropical climate provide ideal growing conditions. The tiny island of Barbados had been seized from the Spanish in the early 17th century and it would be here that the English pioneered a particularly brutal system of plantation agriculture that dramatically increased the output of sugar, making it accessible to ordinary people for the first time. Barbadian colonists forcibly transported thousands of enslaved Africans through the transatlantic slave trade and compelled them to plant, tend and harvest canes on plantations. From sunup to sundown, six days a week, captive Africans had to dig cane holes using heavy iron hose, tend and weed the growing shoots, and then harvest the mature canes that you see here. Once cut, enslaved people had to haul the canes to mills, where other slaves ground them down to extract the sap which was then boiled down into sugar to be shipped back to England. All these tasks were carried out at a frenetic pace under the watchful eyes of capricious drivers and overseers. This ruthless system was enormously productive and its rapid expansion first throughout Barbados and then to the other English Caribbean islands quickly made England the largest importer of sugar in the world. But the success of the Barbadian system was predicated on the ruthless exploitation of African slaves. Enslaved people were worn down by the ceaseless labour on sugar plantations, and so their average life expectancy was just seven years. Birth rates were also extremely low, and enslaved infants often perished from malnutrition and infections. Caribbean planters purchased enslaved Africans to replace the dead and ramp up production, fueling the expansion of England's slave trade. Between 1640, when the Caribbean Sugar Revolution began, and 1807, when the slave trade was abolished, British slave ships carried off a phenomenal 3.2 million Africans. Just 2.7 million of these men, women and children would survive the Atlantic crossing to be forced into the cane fields. Making sugar a staple of the English diet was thus an incredibly violent process and the cane you see here is truly a bloodstained crop 